Hello, everyone, or no one at this point, because it just went live. Um, so welcome to our scar tissue training video. Um, I'm going to wait for people to sort of start uh, pouring in here. And we will get started very, very shortly. So essentially, what we're going to be talking about today is scar tissue, which many people have. I'd be surprised if people don't have scars. Well, I think 80, 90% of people in the room usually raise their hands and ask them, who's got a yeah. scar? I'm the only one in the bunch that doesn't have one. Yeah, you don't have one? No, I, my life has been like a horizontal fall. <laughs> <laughs> I know for a fact that I have uh, quite a few. I had my appendix <laughs> yeah. out, my tonsils out, wisdom teeth, all these things count as scars. Um, hi, Jennifer. Hi, everyone that's joining. Say hi so we know you can hear us. Appreciate that. Hey, hi, guys. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, I mean, everyone has scars, don't they, really? I mean, if you don't have a scar, you haven't lived. Well, that's what they say. Because, you know, when everybody stands around and everybody compares their scars, they yeah. can talk about what happened to them in the past. Yeah. So they've had adventures and things. Yeah, and, to them. and scars hold these yeah. memories in the same way, you know. Exactly, yeah. right. right. Like cards or anything else. Yeah, you know, Susan... <laughs> John was saying to me, he's like, you've dressed up. And I said, well, you know what? I'm a week and a half overdue on laundry, and this was literally the only <laughs> thing I had available. So it's not yeah. it's not that special of an occasion. It's more, um, yeah, it's the bottom, <laughs> bottom of my closet. <laughs> so, um, okay, so what we're going to be, uh, yeah, what we're going to be talking about today is, is scars. And so really what we wanted to start with, John, was what constitutes a scar? Because, of course, there's the obvious, I cut myself, I had surgery, those, those things are scars. Um, but people have noticed from the picture of the event that I put a piercing and a tattoo up there. And these are things I think people don't often think of. So how do, how do we want to break break into that one? Well, I, I think that any, any kind of damage whatsoever that is caused to the skin uh, that goes beyond the epidermis, which is that first layer of cells, yeah. anything below that is constitutes a scar, is damage to the skin. Yeah. So, yeah, so it, it really comes down to that sort of, uh, you, you mentioned to me tattoos, um, it's not all tattoos, right? If they're done right, they don't create scarring. Uh, yeah, in principle, some, some do, but then again, uh, it depends on the tattoo artist or the material or the needles or whatever that they're yeah. using. Because if you're breaking through that second layer of skin, then you may be causing serious scar. Yeah, yeah. So what we're really looking at is um, when you do have a tattoo, um, it, it's the best thing to treat it like a scar because it doesn't hurt to do that, right? Um, One of the things that I saw that was extremely interesting was in the lymphatic system, we have these nodules. And these nodules actually hold your immune system with your white blood cells. Yeah. And the most aggressive of your white blood cells are stored in the, in that nodule. And when the nodule fills with ink, and I've seen this nodule all swollen up, they took the nodule out and they cut it open and it was full of tattoo ink. Oh my goodness. So you, you, so when it does, if you put too much ink in there and it gets into your lymphatics, of course it's going to go through, it's going to filter through the nodules. Sure, yeah. And they'll disrupt your immune response. Yeah. Yeah, so that's something to be aware of. And, of course, there's piercings. I mean, if you're you're creating a hole in your body, that is scar tissue. That is definitely yeah. scar tissue. Um, and so you have to look out, yeah. like, and where it is too, right? Belly buttons, noses, tongues, you know, <laughs> look everywhere. at everywhere. You got to look at what you're, what you're piercing when you do a piercing because, I mean, we, we look a lot to meridians as well, don't we, with these, uh, with these sorts of things. Yeah, well, well, meridians are basically communication pathways through mm -hmm. your body. And, and if you break through a pathway, any pathway, and yeah. no matter how physical it is, then you're disrupting the movement. Yeah, I've been explaining it to people recently. I've been a lot of phone calls last week um, about how meridians may as well be like the, the electrical wires, right, in yeah, your body. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, what happens when you cut an electrical wire? And that's really what you're doing with... You're shorting out. You're or, shorting it out. And the body, you're hoping that the body's going to be able to build some, some path around, around it. Yeah. That. And, and sometimes it does, but... Sometimes it may not. Even if it does build it around it, though, too, it's delaying the progress, right? It does. It's, and sometimes the information will just shoot right back out. I mean, it looks yeah. like a big bowl of spaghetti at times instead of, of, uh, uh, of a nice straight, lineated yeah. collagen. 
I think if you're looking at a meridian and you say, um, or you know, let's look at a particular kind of scar, like for example, C-sections, yeah. right? They're from, from like one point to the other point, cut straight across. Any meridians across that line have been the governor impacted, vessels and so right? So forth. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And mm -hmm. I think if you if you leave those damaged, you start to see deficiencies. Yeah. I say governor should be conception vessel. I think conception vessel. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so I, we we have to be really careful with these things. This is, this is why you know if you're in our private membership, if you've gotten into microcurrent, and you've read any of our books on microcurrent, you're going to see that scarring pops up as our rule number one. You know, treat your scars, and the, and the reason for that is really, if you don't, you're just leaving yourself open to the miscommunication, um, electrical shortages, things that are just not going to work. Um, and part of that is, you know, part of what we're looking at here, um, John, correct me if I'm wrong, in correcting the issues here is um, resonance, right? Well, uh, a lot of people know the word resonance, but how do we apply resonance, and particularly in physical structures, yeah. whether it be a bridge, whether it be uh, a group of cells or tissue, they're all physical structures. Yeah. And we know, uh, we know, for example, that the resonance, I'll just get some of my notes here because I, I, this is so important that we understand. We don't want to miss principle. that, yeah. We don't want to miss this. So frequencies cause tissue change by resonance, okay? Think of resonance like if you have a bunch of pianos in the concert hall. Okay, yeah. Right? And you hit that key that note will resound in all of the pianos yeah but not the key next to it <laughs> yeah right yeah so it's going to be that specific key that's going to resound yeah so it means that that there it is possible through resonance to be able to get uh, any tissue to respond yeah right? okay Res it'll resonate yeah now uh let me give you an example of that I know that the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, for example, people saw it on TV, they saw a little bit everywhere, where uh, the storm came up. Yeah. And the bridge had not been well designed. They hadn't taken in this potential for resonance. And uh, what happened is that it started to resonate and it started to swing and it just tore itself apart. Right, yeah. And uh, the engineers blamed resonance uh, because of the storm that broke the, the bridge. Okay, yeah. And we also know that uh, a military group marching across the bridge, they will have to get them out of time, like left, right, left, right. Sometimes you're going to have to break that up. Or the resonance. Of the the resonance of the marching uh, across the bridge will actually break the bridge, mm. will break the, the elements that keep the bridge together. And now, if you take that same principle, now we know that every mechanical system and every chemical bond has its resonant frequency, right? And we've seen also, I think it was, I don't know if it was Fitzgerald, or I know that it was, there was a singer, uh, there is a singer by the name of Jaime Vandera, who demonstrated the power of his voice by shattering a lead crystal glass on the Discovery Channel. <laughs> You know, on the Mythbuster show. Yeah. So it, it, your voice actually will create a resonance that will break the glass. So we're seeing the, the application of resonance one more time. Yeah. Uh, and the resonant frequency, even small driving forces can produce very large amplitude vibrations, right? So... What we're, do, what we're doing with scar tissue, if you take scars, a scar is like, um, like a slinky, okay? Like a yeah. spring, I'll spray sure, yeah. Or we can also compare it to like a rubber band, like in a toy airplane where you, you, you wind up the propeller and the rubber band kind of winds up really tight. Yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's what happens with, with scar tissue compared to normal collagen. But at the same time, like a slinky, if you will, if you spread the slinky out and then you put a little little structures to keep keep it like unwound yeah and if you if you resonate at the right frequency you can actually break these bonds so that the slinky will unwind gotcha so the slinky is a scar tissue the slinky would be the scar we need tissue. to resonate at the right points the right frequency will break those bonds that will and how do you know that it has broken is when the scar flattens out right yeah because now it's unwound and it will flatten out and i think yeah, yeah most of the time we see when people treat that's why we say when you treat your scars feel them first 
then yeah, the tree, I'll, I'll get into that. We'll get into because, that in a yeah, because there's an emotional. Well, there are three elements that we want to talk about: scars that yeah. are important as well. I don't. I don't want to ignore Dennis's question here before it gets buried in other clothes. <laughs> okay. But he's just saying, if a client has a full sleeve tattoo, can I put two pads at the top and two at the bottom and run seventy-seven for a few hours, or do you need to, I guess, run over the whole thing? You probably run over the whole thing because we're, we're now that we understand the resonance value what we're trying to do is we're trying to break down the elements of keeping the scar in place sure yeah so uh and, but this the tattoo itself isn't necessarily a scar yeah unless it's unless it's mean, if it's, say it's, it itches it itches it means that we have broken the skin sure and we have created an injury not like with it with a piercing where we know it's a scar we know that that's yeah. definitely it was definitely scar. a scar okay okay great so we're continuing on okay okay so, <laughs> so yeah, we've got our resonance thing down. Um, and so then we got to look at, so if, if resonance unwinds the scars, are we talking about the electrical neutralization of, of scars, which we know is necessary, or are we talking about actually breaking apart scars? Because I know people are interested in both. Well, I mean, if you, and, um, frequency will do that. Mm -hmm. Frequency will cause an oscillation. The oscillation will cause a, 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 a breakdown of the uh, uh, resonance at the right frequency will break down those those little elements that keep the scar together. Okay, yeah. So once it, once it's broken down, it'll flatten, and no matter how many times you come back after that, there's not there's no sense because it's been those bonds have been broken. Sure. Okay. okay. So once you first treat them, the bonds are broken. <laughs> yeah. That, that may leave me with still what I might consider an ugly scar on my arm. Yeah. But electrically. Electrically, it's restored. Uh, it's rest well, it's restored. Yes, it's no longer a capacitor. And a capacitor is an electrical or electronic device that is used to store energy. Okay, like yeah. electrical energy. And uh, you've heard of, uh, let's say, you don't play in the back of your TV set, even if it's unplugged, because it has built up. The capacitor is full of electrical charge. Okay. And it might zap you if you're playing if it. You're playing TV. Yeah. So what you want to do is you want to discharge the capacitor before you play with it. So what we what we're looking at is discharging that capacitor, which is the scar. Okay. And, and that's why it will hold up to one and a half volts of electricity. And that's why we want to go for the whole body and look for all the scars because otherwise we've just got a ton of capacitors yeah, in them. and i think one of the things we see that like which would be the worst for this would be like a burn victim right oh burns uh, you know and, and the worst thing is if you take new zealand i don't know if there's not anybody from new zealand on tonight i know they had a volcano a eruption lot. lately and they're looking for like a mile a square of skin right now to be able to patch these poor people up yeah but from their burns and if you no matter what, all the material you read on scars, I mean, there's 600, 1200, Medscape, all of these places have information about scarring caused by burns, which is one of the worst kinds of scars. Yeah. And there is not one mention of microcurrent to, 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 to cure this. There's everything else, but there is not microcurrent. Yet we know. The microcurrent is possibly the fastest way to neutralize number one the pain, and number two to participate in the repair. Yeah, yeah, and I mean we have that. Um, I wish I could slow, show slides on here, but we have that um, that slide of that the arc welder that exploded, right? right. Yeah, and, and I mean two like weeks. this was yeah two weeks, and and the skin had regrown to normal, and it it avoided scarring completely just yeah. by treating yeah. treating it early on. Um, and that was up without skin grafts and all of that stuff, which they would normally go to debriding, Absolutely. none of that. And how many people have I, um, have contacted us about either, um, uh, burns with, a, a welder welding machine or one of these small hand welders, whatever, you know, you burn yourself. Yeah. It hurts like hell. Yeah. And immediately the pain dissipates when mm -hmm. you use, when you use microcurrent on Yeah. And it usually heals without any kind of scarring. Yeah, and that and that's the thing. If you can avoid the scarring altogether, that's a plus too. I mean, that's number one. And number two, you don't get like cross linking if you act immediately. Right. You so, won't get the cross linking. So you get that scar build up. rather than letting it build yeah. up to the point where if it you does. let it build up, the body's going to try to repair it and it's going to cross link it. Yeah, and you see, I've seen some pictures of um of the just the way the tissue looks after it's you know normal tissue and mm -hmm. scar tissue and scar tissue it looks like 
um, like spider webs, like thick mucus. Well, it, 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 it'll deface, it'll actually pull. And, and you can imagine you get a scar on your face and you got your skin pulled so your face is Because it's so tight, right? It's it, so tight. You could, you could be an actor in one of these horror movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all because of this, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. this scar. And, and I, I mean, it's, you know, you can start to break that up. And as you say, soften it up and you'll feel the, the softening yeah. immediately. The trick is get in immediately after the burn don't wait yeah you no know, don't wait because then you're you're having to uh, to, to gen to regenerate mm -hmm. and to, that's to, a much longer process yeah, to break those structures yeah and not yeah. impossible but much longer than that's a lot longer yeah and not only that but the emotion is also there that mm -hmm. that's keeping it in place as well because yeah. your brain starts to think see you have a, a, a scar on, on an arm or whatever and now your brain is participating in the whole process. It says, don't use the arm or we'll, 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 we'll take because, care yeah. of that member or where, whatever it is because it's damaged. Yeah. So as, as we, the further we go forward, the more the brain is involved in, don't use that arm because it's, it's damaged. damaged. Yeah. Don't want to use the damaged limbs. Yeah. 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 And, and see, there, Suzanne. Suzanne is saying, you know, she's a pedi pediatric burn nurse, and she sees kids with chest, arms, legs with burn scars, grafting scars. And you can't, like, that's the thing, right? Is you can't go in with your microcurrent machine and treat these people, <coughs> even though you know you can help them because it's without yeah. outside of your scope. Of practice, uh, it's horrible. It's I mean, it's the same thing was happening with with wound healing. Mm -hmm. And uh, here in in Malaysia, in Asia, we we know that it affects like within thirty days using only two modes, two two algorithms. They're able to we're accelerate able to that. reverse and accelerate the healing. Yeah. So we come on to American soil and they say, oh, that's that's Malaysians, you know. They're that we don't care about that. They're care physiologically about different, as if humans aren't all the same inside, right? <laughs> he said, we need we need studies done on American soil. We don't care about what happened over there. Yeah. So what happened is that uh, Baylor and uh, Stanford University took the same study and they replicated it over here and finally is being published. Now it's being yeah. accepted, yeah. So, so that um, well, you know, rejoice soon. We will be, and we will have FDA clearance of microcurrent for oh, accelerating wound. Yeah, healing. and uh, I'm I'm hoping that this will find its way into burn units. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and it, and you know, if they can allow that overlap to occur, it'll make a uh, huge, huge yeah, difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you you you've got the three elements involved in in scar tissue that you wanted to talk about. Well, let, let's. I, I, I wrote already this, sort of so I, that, right? and, and, and I think that we can probably really, you know, publish it on, on somewhere, yeah. somewhere on Facebook and whatever. So uh, we all agree that the moment a scar is created, there's an emotion that accompanies it. Can you imagine that? You remember any time that you have, there is, a, sure. no matter what it is, yep. whether it be surgery, whether it be a burn, whether it be an accident, you remember quite vividly the moment it happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the so, emotional yeah. aspect. So the, very, the brain is very protective of the traumatized body part. Yep, sure. Okay, like in your arm, you go, you've got a, you had a bit of surgery there. So your, your brain is connecting to that scar. Yeah. Okay, and it's trying to protect it. Yep. So that, that's why getting the client to touch their scar before scar treatment, before the treatment begins, followed by touching the scar again, once the scar structure has been unwound and the scar flattens out, is telling the brain that it no longer needs to be so protective of the once wounded body part. Yeah. Now you can imagine that now your brain has an idea and every time you touch your scar, you're reinforcing, you're reinforcing that moment, that emotion. A new emotion of, of treating yeah, it and yeah. the difference instead. Now, if, now you treat it, you go back in and you go, wow. It's different. Hey, that's different. It's flattening out. Yeah. And your brain says, then I no longer have to respond like I did before because that's a good change, a positive change. It's right? a positive change, so I no longer need yeah. to protect that limb. It's, it's, it's psychological. Yeah. And, but it's also very logical. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So psychological. <laughs> you get that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> so the scar tissue itself acts as a capacitor, okay? So it builds that electrical charge. Uh, or an electrical storage unit or electronic component that stores electrical charge with a capacitor. Yeah. So this is contrary to collagen fibers, which normally conduct electrical uh, information down okay. the conductor. Yeah. 
So it stops there and builds up instead of going across. So when we discharge the capacitor by flattening That's it what out, talks about, yeah. now we're restoring communication, which is natural. So there's not a blockage that just absorbs it anymore and keeps gets through. And so what, what, how would those blockages sort of uh, manifest themselves in someone's health? Like, so, you know, what are they going to notice? Because some people will say to me, we had this happen in the clinic in the yeah. summer. Someone said, well, I don't understand how this scar could be making the difference now. You know, I got this scar 10 years ago. Why is it now that this system... It's not now, it was all the time. Yeah. It was all the way through. Let's say you have a problem, let's say you have a problem in your hand. Okay, or you have a problem in your forearm or yeah. your wrist, and you have the scar on your arm, and you saw that in it's the sort of in class. training. Yeah, remember you just couldn't get couldn't any get any change. reading down there. Yeah, there was nothing on there. Was the, nothing going yeah. on. You clear the scar, and then everything changed. Yeah. Okay. Now you can extrapolate on this. You know, now now we're seeing. You saw it. You know, it was a demonstration. You were able to experience that. Now we're seeing people who have surgery, for example, they, they have a new body part that's been implanted. Yeah. And here's this big scar over your kidney or whatever. And we're finding that, the, the, you know, we're finding it rejects, rejects. What they're, they're studying now, maybe that kidney reject was caused by a scar. So they're studying, they did a 10, they're doing a 10 year study on the scars to see, see if it's a scar that's rejecting, that's, that's causing, causing reject. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's blocking the communication. There's, a, there's an electrical charge of one and a half volts. Now, uh, I was really impressed because about whew, 15, 18 years ago, maybe maybe closer to 20 years ago, I, I, got, I found a, a document written by a guy called Albert Fleckenstein from Freiburg University in West Germany. I thought he was rather important because he was the co-discoverer of the sodium potassium pump. Okay. Okay, which is the electrical movement across the cell membrane. And he has shown that once a nerve membrane has lastingly lost its electrical potential, okay, of, of, of resting potential could be 50, 60, 70, 80 millivolts, and, and it's lastingly hypo or hyperpolarized, the ion pumps in the cell membrane cannot work and the cell is not only electrically paralyzed, but also the, metabs, the metabolism of the cell itself cannot work properly. Okay. So certain waste products of the cell's metabolism cannot be eliminated from the interior of the cell, and toxic waste accumulates. So this toxic waste is responsible for the perpetuation of the abnormal membrane potential. So we're creating an abnormal potential, and, and it's acting as if you had implanted a one and a half volt battery right into the body and is keeping this communication from going from this group to that group. It makes a lot of sense. We're talking about, you know, millivolts compared to a one and a half volt battery. Yeah, big so difference. Big difference. So how many cells are being neutralized or incapacitated by this, this the, the electrical charge on, on the scar? Yeah. Okay, so that that was my <laughs> that was my participation there. So there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just I'll just hop back onto this question here. So Hetty is asking, um, how do you go about putting equipment onto a burn without risking infection? Usually, you can work either on uh, look at the area that's not burned, or right around that, right? right around the, the yeah. periphery, so that you can put a, a you or you can go PEMF, which is great as well. Uh -huh. Now, a lot of the research on burns was done with PEMFs. Okay. Right. So they, they work extremely well and you don't have to be in contact. Yeah. So you avoid that pain as well as risk of Yeah, infection. it's very yeah. sterile. Yeah. Uh, or you can, if you're going to use pads then and you don't have PEMF unit, then put them on the area of skin that is that is normal. normal. Yeah. Sort of, you can almost, especially if you have the four pads, you can box you it can, in. You can box it in. Yeah. 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 And then you're just sort of like creating a grid around it. Sort of like Dennis was asking earlier with the tattoo, only with a burn because... Yeah, it doesn't require yeah, as much. It's, yeah. it's more about the healing at that point than it is the the scar tissue, which is a topic we're talking about today. We're not, we're right. not, <laughs> we won't get out. Let yeah, ourselves yeah, get yeah. Try to stay on, on, on John and I, anyone that's familiar with our uh, our live videos in, in the other groups, we have a tendency to go off track and, and go on. Top I find that's where the most interesting berries are. Well, yeah, <laughs> sure, sure, yeah. Yeah, go blueberry. Yeah, we go blueberry picking. <laughs> oh, all the time, but that doesn't necessarily mean sometimes they're not 
they are not evidently there. They're behind the bush. <laughs> You'll pick around to find the good <laughs> stuff. Pick around to find the good stuff. So, okay, so those are our, our three major elements involved in, in scar tissue. And, and that's the reason that we go to clear scar tissue. But a lot of the time, scars will also cause pain. And so the reason that a scar will cause someone pain is because it's so tight, right? Well, the pain, there's an... Uh, uh, the pain may be, may be referred as well. Okay, yeah. That's why we, we at the beginning, uh, we decided that we wanted to do, uh, we wanted to do scars as number one because it may be involved in referred pain. Right. You might have pain uh, down your leg and it may be coming from a scar in your arm. So, and it's almost like taking a sheet and putting it on a table and then you go to one end of the table, one corner, and you pull on the sheet, you see this ripple effect all the way across. Mm. And that same ripple effect might affect the myelin, the, the, the myelin sheet uh, right, of, yeah. of the body, right? And so it may it may send information all the way down the body. This is why sometimes you you, you get people you're working on their shoulder, they feel it down the shin, or they feel it on the opposite leg, right, opposite side. Yeah, it's because of that. So so it's not impossible for pain to be referred by a scar. Okay. Yeah. So and so, ultimately, even re is reducing and clearing that scar going to reduce the pain of that scar? Well, right. The pain will do, disappear almost immediately because you're taking the pressure off. Right. And I know one of the common questions is always, "Well, how long do I treat the scar for?" And I usually say three minutes, just because then I think you've covered enough of that. I think what you have to do is, if you go back to the the narrows bridge or the resonant value, and we know that it has unwound when it flattens out. Right, yeah. So how long do you need to go until it flattens out? Until they put their hands on it. And they feel it differently. And they feel they go, oh my God, yeah, this is so much flatter. Speaking about flattening out scars, um, there's, there's keloid scars as well, which are those, yeah. those the thick, ropey scars. Um, and those are treated in a different way. Um, so we use different frequency to treat those, but the goal is to, you, you will get those flattened out pretty intensely, right? Like. Yeah, they, they're, they're kind of ropey. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, for me, right at the beginning, uh, you've seen a, a lot more often, for example, in black people or okay. colored people will have keloids a lot more than whites for some reason. <laughs> uh, and also, um, it may be because of a lack of a certain substance that carries a protein through the skin. Right, okay. Uh, in my in my naturopathic days, uh, I was told that um, a shortage in zinc, zinc deficiency, will cause keloids. Oh yeah, and stretch marks and so on and so forth. Right. Some people will uh, will will gather, will store, you know, like stretch marks. Almost all they have to do is lose weight or uh, the pregnancy, and, and they show up. Mark. Yeah, they show up. Yeah. And why do they do that? You know, they may use shea butter and they use all kinds of stuff. But then they end up with this terrible looking right. scar yeah. uh, that they're really stuck with. Yeah. And it is related to a mineral deficiency. Hmm. Oh, that's a zinc deficiency. It's a zinc deficiency. Interesting. Um, and yeah, I know uh, we were going to bring up stretch marks a little bit. Um, you know, I, I've often been asked by people, do my stretch marks count as scars? Do I need to clear my stretch marks when you're... They are, they are actually... They are actually scars. referred to as scars, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And they, were they surfaced, do you think, or do they, are they quite deep? They're quite deep because they've, you've lost elasticity, so it's, it's affected the collagen and right. elastin within the skin, right? And of course, with, as you say, with how prevalent and... and um, frequent they occur on one person that gets them it's not like they've got one stretch mark usually they have a lot yeah and that's covering a lot of area that's yeah, all stuff yeah. yeah yeah that can cause some big big problems yeah um i would just interject here and ask a question how do you treat a scar in a weird location specifically i had a gum graft and the dentist took the graft material from the roof of my mouth so uh, i would say i mean i would that is so painful right? yeah oh my god i'm so yeah. sorry, painful please. thinking about it right yeah, I wish I'm glad I'm not the dentist that did it. That would cause you all that pain. It would have been terrible. Yeah. I, I, sleep I, at night. I, would, I would say, <laughs> honestly, like the, the only thing I can think of is that that tongue stimulator you can get right up on the, yeah, on the roof. Yeah, most likely right on the roof. Yeah, uh, yeah definitely. I, would you say, because we mentioned PEMFs earlier, if you had the choice between clearing scars with the machine, with microcurrent directly or with a PEMF, would you choose microcurrent? Well, I'm looking for the resonance. Right. The resonance, I, I'll get it from the device. So I won't get it from the PEMF. So while the PEMF is a great option for people that yeah. don't have access to damping, which I know people wanted us to talk about, um, 
if you have the choice, you know, if you have that yeah, option. I'll go with the device. Yeah. yeah. And, and I feel the same as well. I think you get that, you get that change uh, in the scar when you treat it. Yeah. You, um, you can see it happening. It doesn't take a long time. No, no. Maybe the first minute. I've, 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 I've often done scars where within 30 seconds, one minute, we're already starting to see it flatten out. It means that the bonds are broken. Yeah. And I, I would love to say that the PEMFs are as effective, but I don't know if they are. And I think, but, but, you know, it Maybe comes down to, it well, exactly. Yeah. I, do, I think, you know, it, it doesn't hurt to try. And if that's what you've got and, and always treat the surface of the scars too, or treat over the area anyway, because you don't know if it's going to hit the right point and break it up, you know, and, that, and that's, that's yeah. the important thing. Yeah. It's like you said, removing all those little bits to, to let it fall to pieces. Exactly, yeah. Um, so, Okay, so we've got a couple of more questions here, actually. Let's just make sure I fully answered that one. I am a jury. Hi, how you doing? Yeah, I mean, everything in the belly button. Um, you know, Raylene, oh my gosh, Kimberly Ann, how about that? Well, you got to think about this. You got to think about the belly button. All old buddies. Yeah, they're all here. <laughs> but I mean, the belly button is, is created yeah, from yeah, yeah, snip, absolutely. right? Some will, some will end up with like a nodly belly button. Mm, yeah, yeah. Just badly cut, maybe. Yeah. yeah. So you have to work on that as well. Yeah. You know, and your bottom won't fall off. Well, and I don't see why, you know, people, if you think it could be a scar, go for it because, yeah. you know, we want to make sure we're getting it done. And, and as we said, everyone has scars. And this, this may be the, the, the scar everyone has. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not, uh, yeah, Kimberly Ann says, could, uh, could we heal stretch marks with microcurrent by stimulating collagen production? I don't think that sometimes some scars are actually an abundance of collagen production or an overproduction of collagen, you know, and that's where they start to, to be ropey. To yeah. So uh, it isn't that so much as breaking those bonds, flattening it out, and then increasing the electrical conductivity. Right. Yeah. 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 I think that's what you really want to do. I think vitamin C, for example, will work better than vitamin E in, in, in reproducing collagen. Okay, yeah. So, you know, how do you make collagen? Um, um, there's a disease, very well-known disease, that actually has killed people. And it's caused by a lack of vitamin C. It's scurvy. Yeah, well, right. Kill all the pirates. <laughs> yeah, so all these pirates that were killed by scurvy, you think about it, and then they finally discovered that it was a vitamin C deficiency. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was like the gums and the, and the cells. Everything started to fall apart. The body started to fall apart. The cells no longer, everything was, so the collagen was falling apart. Well, for such a for such a uh, important vitamin, why don't we make it right? Like, I mean, we, we've seen, you know, animals make tons <laughs> yeah, of, yeah. and we have to get yes. it from ourselves. Like, yeah, you know, we, yeah. we have to get it from different locations and from our food rather than yeah. just being able to produce it ourselves. You know, we'll, we've said it before. We'll say it again. Humans were not very like, uh, well put together. We don't have a good blueprint behind us. Yeah, um, like our prostates would be in our forehead. <laughs> so we don't have to sit on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know how that would <laughs> <laughs> so um Raylene asked, so yeah, eye surgeries, um, scars from that, probably the best bet is the VHE, maybe the goggles. Um yeah, goggles, yeah, on seventy seven on seventy seven hertz. Um, you know, if you have the goggles, Raylene, go for those. Um, because again, we're looking at that direct microcurrent versus PEMF. Yeah. Um, but otherwise if you have the VHE or the Chi Wave even you know, limited amounts so you're not putting high frequencies in your brain. Yeah. Um, but I, I would say that would be a good bet. Um, it, it's kind of funny just being, you know, when, when we think about 19 or so years ago, um, one of our students from England comes back to England and he says, I, I said, where were you? And he, he said, I was out in California. I was attending a, uh, uh, a, a training put on by a German fellow by, by the name of Klinghardt, Dietrich Klinghardt. Mm -hmm who figures that scar tissue is like, oh my God, it screws up communication in the body and we have to treat all scars in the mouth, anywhere, under the hairline, wherever they are. And he was doing it with uh, um, with these injections of, of, of um, kind of a lidocaine, um, procaine sort of thing. Okay. And um, um, which was causing a, a problem of its own because you could see it in x rays years later. You could find this procaine that was supposed to have a neutralized electrical charge. So when he came back, they said, We have to do scars, we have to do scars. So I said, Oh my god, yeah, okay, let's do scars, but what frequency are we going to use? 
So here I'm with I'm with your mom, and we're in uh, we're we're in Poole, England, and we're looking up this Russian. Uh, um, he's a he's a physicist, but he he's a biophysicist, and he's a medical doctor, and he's an acupuncturist. So the guy is totally brilliant. Yeah. And he's preparing dinner for us. He's happy to see us, and we haven't seen him even since his last trip from Moscow. You know, in that in the Skinar world in the old time. So I asked him, I said, I said, Michael, Mihail, his name was Mihail. I said, Mihail, I said, what, what, what's the frequency to neutralize consciousness? And he responded right away. He said, 77 hertz. Don't you know that? You know, you don't know that. <laughs> I don't know that. <laughs> well, now you do. Now I know. Yeah. So 77 hertz. And that's how it came about. Mm. So when we got back, we said, Ah, 77, the new religion. And then you just do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there we go. Do it. And it becomes, it, and it's, again, to All reiterate, world, it's, rule, it's rule number one. Yeah, and, yeah. and, you know, if you if you don't do it, you may notice that you're going to run into some bar barriers later on, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and that may be the reason. So if you, if you, some people I know, um, until we started forming these groups, coming online, talking about these things, they had had their machines for years and they were getting good results. They weren't quite resolving their problem. They never treated their scars. And you treat the scars and you see that the difference is you know, made. It's it's huge. Huge. You know, it's, communication is a great thing. <laughs> right now, Brexit, they're, they're, they're finally voting. Mm -hmm. They're voting like tomorrow, oh, I think, geez. for a new prime minister. And it's all about Brexit, get it done. What is Brexit really? It's separation from, from, you, from the, the European, the European Union. Union. Yeah. Union. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, it's called going rogue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so group selves go rogue because they no longer feel that they belong to the great yeah. union. Yeah. So this is what happens in your body. You don't want yourselves to go rogue. No. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm going to ask before because I'm sure we've got a load of questions here. It says new eight new comments I haven't even seen yet. Um, but so I want to bring up breaking apart scar tissue physically because we've seen a lot of people talk about using that blue stimulate algorithm from uh, machines. Um, to actually um, cosmetically break apart the scar tissue so it's no longer visible. And, and I think while we talk about electrically reducing the scar tissue, what people want a lot more than anything half the time is to not have it visibly showing, right? Well, there's that. And there's how do I, you know, surgery may have caused adhesions to scars. They can be scars as well. So adhesions is when, let's say, they're playing around, the, around your large intestine. And the gut goes, sticks, one wall sticks to the other. Yeah. All of a sudden, now you have a scar-like situation. So how do I get in? And actually, is by adding damping. Right. Yeah. Okay. So the more damping you add, the deeper into the tissue you're getting. So if you're wanting to use, uh, to get in deep into the bowel, then you would go into AVA, find your 77 hertz, and dampen uh, as high as you can, yeah. yeah, six or seven. Yeah. So go all the way on damping, and that way you're going to be driving the signal. And you're going to have to bring up the power all the time because as you dampen, they feel the power less and less because it's getting deeper and deeper. It's right, deeper yeah. and deeper. And so that's something to bear in mind, everyone. That is a that is a function of the professional machine, not a function of the of the non-professional devices. Um, but for that, you know, you still want to treat your scars. Externally, you're still going to want to use try using the PEMF uh, devices to get deep. Yeah, um, yeah, to get as deep as you can, especially in that kind. And they're using devices now that are passive, where they'll 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 use a navel or some other place to you know so that they can put a camera into your body. They blow up the areas. So they have this other area where they kind of put air in there. They blow up the abdomen and then they, they take they a look crawl around with the camera. But when they're crawling around, they've got this little, little snips that go in the snipping in, snipping tissue. So you're creating scars as you're going. So somebody might say, Hey, they took out my gallbladder, they went through my navel, and I've got hardly any scars at all. You have visible. Them. Yeah, you have them. But you've got a whole trail of scars under your skin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's where you're going to have to use that damping and the blue stimulate seems to be able, because it goes up and down, it wraps and I think it's creating its resonance. It seems to have its own ability to dampen anyway. Yeah, to, yeah. to create resonance, to create that amplitude that will break down the bonds. And so that will be, you know, that is in, in, in the, the evolution device as well. So a lot of new people here um, are going to have this machine. Um, and great machine, 
definitely. But um, blue stimulate may be the thing you need to do to break apart that scar tissue and get deep scars. Yeah, and keloids as well and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and, and scars, especially if you look at heart, people have had... Um, a heart attack, right? Heart attacks and they've had bypass surgery. So bypass surgery is like taking uh, uh, a vein out of your leg as, and getting a bit of that vein. They'll cut out the seminous vein. And then they'll go to the to the heart. They'll bypass that that plug in or the plug in the artery. They'll pipe and bypass it with a vein. So you've got now a vein which is a not as tough as an artery, and that's why we call it bypass surgery. Okay. Yeah. Now you can and it's open heart. It's open thorax. Yeah, well. they pull you open. I mean, you're like you're like lying on the table with your head back, and, you're, and and they're tearing everything apart and going right in there. So it's not it's not that passive. It's not an easy thing. So, yeah. So the best thing to do is not to have a heart attack. <laughs> yeah. For me, I say okay. So uh, so what and what you're seeing and you'll see that they use almost like bailing wire to to, to, to sew this thing back in. It's so so it's so aggressive, so severe. So what you need to do then, and and if if you were to see a cadaver later on, you you see that that scar has gone and it's, it's actually glued itself all the way down to your spine almost. It just goes right through your it's body. Deep. So you need to get deep into that area. So this is where the damping is comes really in. really important. And one one of the uh, one of the programs that actually does automatic damping, five four three two one sort of thing, is actually stimulate. Mm -hmm. Regular stimulate, right? Yeah. Regular stimulate, and and not only that, but it actually crosses that resonance, so it creates a resonance. Sure. And like blue stem does it, but it's like stimulate on steroids. Mm -hmm. So that's why blue stem has that capacity to get in deep and back out again, and up and down. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we're creating that resonance, and but we're getting deep. So I'm wondering, you know, uh, we've been using seventy seven with very lot of success. But sometimes I think we may need to add something like a stimulator or a blue, yeah. blue stem uh, to be able to get it all. Or if it's not yeah. acting as fast as we'd like it to, they might need to yeah. adjust that. Yeah. I mean, you, you want to add a little bit more oomph. So we are coming up to the end of our time. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to open the floor to questions. I'm going to start by answering these. If you have any questions, drop them here and we will answer them um, before the time is up. So, um, so we thought we wouldn't, we, we wouldn't we, have we were hopeful. Yeah, we didn't think we'd have enough material. We were like, it's 20 minutes, 20 minute video. Here we are at 42, so. <laughs> Either I'm, I'm, I'm like a windbag, I just keep <laughs> All right, so, so April here says, what if the scar is already flat? How do you know if the scar needs to be treated and for how long? If it's already flat, chances are it wasn't very deep. Uh, you know, scars that are fairly surfacey will have a tendency to flatten out pretty By themselves. Good. Yeah. So we still treat them? I treat it anyway, just in yeah. case. Yeah, it's just sort of a it's it's sort of a, a precaution, and I mean, for how long? We usually do a three minute brief treatment, three to five. Um, it and, takes no time at all. Yeah, I mean, you might as well get it done. And and I think I, I've heard people as well find we we always talk about active zones, sticky spots, right? Yeah. You know, if you find those on scars, you need to keep going until they're gone, really, right? And don't don't forget. I mean, uh, we all think about. I mean, uh, oh, I don't have any scars. Uh, do you have any children? Yeah, I've had three or four. Have you ever sold you or did you ever get sold up? Yeah. How about that scar? You know, yeah. From childbirth. That is a scar. And yeah. It's right on the, on the conception. But so you really need to treat that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, if, if it's your client, then hand them the device, set up the frequency, and there's the, there's the bathroom, and go ahead and have a go. Yeah. You know, uh, you, you've got to get it done. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we already answered the one about uh, healing stretch marks with microcurrent. So yeah, when we when we say device directly, we're talking about we're talking about like this rather than the via chi or the chi wave pad, um, which would be our PEMF machines. Um, so the direct microcurrent that comes out of the back um, or out of any of the attachments plugged into it. That's the that's the yeah. preference there. So uh, regarding deep layer scarring, such as two repeated C sections at same site, fusing abdominal muscles to scar, what would you suggest? Same idea is is possibly that stimulated you got. If you've got a pro sport uh, three sort of device, so it gets deep, deep end. Yeah, so you want you want to get as deep as possible. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh yeah. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry is you, J Diana or Jerry? I think it's Jerry. Uh, is using uh, <laughs> vitamin C. The vitamin C yeah. spray for life. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Tasty stuff. It's good stuff. 
Um, so including the uterus uh, to C-section scar fusion, it'll be the same thing, right? It stimulates the best, yeah, the best way to, yeah. to sort of break that up. Yeah, something about the, about the uterus. Uh, you say there are two areas where we don't have to worry so much about scar tissue. Mm-hmm. One of them is bone. Okay. You're not bone, you don't yeah. have to worry about that. The other one is uterus. <laughs> yeah. It, it, because every month, it sheds itself. Yeah. You know? so, so you don't have to worry about you that. You don't have to worry about that. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, so Andrea says, can scars <laughs> come back after treatment? I had laparoscopy through my belly button. I treat it and it flattens out, but then the bump of the scar comes back a week or so later. I treat it again and it comes back over and over. What's going on? I treat it and it flattens out, but then the bump of the scar comes back a week or so later. I try and try, be a little bit more aggressive with it. I try, try and stimulate or try blue stem or one of those. And, and maybe that bridge is, maybe that link is a little bit harder than right than yeah yeah for sure and, and I, I know i've had some people talk about that as well like my scars are not flattening out or they are temporarily flattening out or i can't stop it being sticky and i, I know usually the response is to just keep going at it right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so I, I probably have my my grandson edgar on there and yeah. caroline <laughs> Watch good me. uh grandpapa john <laughs> hey <laughs> So, um, Pam, what about when a heart valve was placed in a vein in the groin and slid up to the heart? Would it have caused scarring all the way up? Would hope not. <laughs> yeah, you'd hope not. Hope not. Hey, if it did, I mean, how do you how do you accomplish oh God, that? Yeah, you had to go right up, you know, right up the artery, or right down the artery. Just sort of follow up. Down. Yeah, yeah, follow it down. Wow. Um, so. Kim, blue stem frequency for breaking up scar tissue and include ABA 77 hertz damping to drive signal deeper. How long for each would you recommend? Well, you know, um, you're looking for a change. Mm-hmm. You're looking for a change. Yeah. And, and if, if you can't feel it, you can't touch it, then... It's going to be harder to judge that it's change, be right? Yeah. You, you, need, you need a gauge of some kind. Yeah. I found that, uh, you know, don't exceed 20, 30 minutes at a time and then, you know, maybe give it a... a I go again a couple of days later. I know one of the very common questions is people want to keep treating their scars because they don't like, uh, they, they, they're worried that, that a short treatment isn't enough to discharge that capacitor. But it is, right? It, it is. <laughs> it is. I mean, it doesn't take long at all. <laughs> the, pro- the problem that I've seen uh, with scar clearance is some people have spent too much time Clearing too many scars. I mean, uh, there's uh, scars all over the body. Mm-hmm, sure. <clears throat> but remember what I said about the emotions that build up with every scar? Yeah. And the person had an emotional breakdown because she was eliciting the emotion from everyone. From everyone scars. at the same time. Yeah. So, yeah. So if you have a lot of scars, take it easy. Uh, you don't have to clear them all in one session. Yeah. Then wait till the next day. Let the person emotionally be able to, to sure to, to adapt to adapt. yeah 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 lots to do so okay so i think that brings us to the end of our questions so i hope everyone enjoyed um our scar tissue training um we're going to be doing more trainings different things if you i'm going to set up a poll actually for topics that people want to talk about because people love polls yeah they're fun <laughs> <laughs> you get to put your yeah. thing and it, it lights up and everyone's yeah. you can see what everyone thinks of your idea so we'll, we'll set up a poll because there's a, there's a lot of topics that we need to talk about like this so that people get the gist of it and, and, and so they can understand it in the moment, right? And see what's really going on here. Oh, there's one more question there. So Chris is saying, what about brain surgery scarring? Is it okay to do this on the head? Yeah, you know. It's sort of a catch-22, it, isn't it? It is. It is. You know, because the, the, the crazy thing is you don't really know a whole lot about what frequency your brain is in right now. At the moment, right? At that moment. Yeah. You can only, neurofeedback or biofeedback permits you to be able to see your brain waves uh, via a computer screen. Mm-hmm. So that when you when you see them, you're, a, you're actually able to modify them. You're able to change them. So you go, okay, so... These these frequencies, alpha, beta, beta, delta, theta, gamma, do you want to really mess with them in any great way? You know, do you want to be sitting under a big electromagnetic thing in the junkyard <laughs> changing your brain frequencies? I've seen some pretty nasty things happen to people who have been submitted to higher frequencies than they should be. Yeah. They've gone a little bit nuts. 
so I, I don't want anybody to go nuts on me. So what I would do is if you were working on it, use gamma. Okay. Gamma is a brain frequency that can that can actually be in a high gamma, actually up in the 60 hertz range. So yeah. we, we're used to 30 or something. Say gamma on this device, we've got 32 to 45. Yeah. So we're in the safe range. Yeah. So I, I, I'll say to people, you know, if you're working on your brain, you're working on your head, stay in the safe range, 32, 45. You can even take it all the way to 60 because that's still in the gamma range. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, and then um, there'll be the last question I'm going to take here. Uh, what about scarring from tonsils and adenoids removed? Yeah, same idea. You want to get in that area, uh, Pyrgov's ring, for example. Do Pyrgov's ring, do it in 77. Instead of the 90, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, and so Pyrogob's ring, um, if you're, I believe, and you're in our private membership group, you'll have a video on how to do that. So I checked that out. Um, that's going to help you a lot. Um, but you probably already know that one. So, okay, everyone. Uh, so Merry Christmas to all of you, but we should be seeing you next week for another video. Um, and uh, before Christmas. Before Christmas. Right. Yeah, we'll do one more. We'll get all dressed up with our Grinch uniforms. Yeah. Uh, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Santa outfits. <laughs> Santa outfits. All right, so thanks everyone for joining us. And um, if you have any questions after we're done, just drop them in the video and we will get to them. So have a good evening and so uh, for, thanks very for much. For those that we, we, we won't be seeing again, Merry Christmas. Yes, and, absolutely. And safe and happy new year. Yeah, yeah absolutely. All right, everyone, thanks very much. Bye-bye.